Hello friend, how is it going? Welcome back to Toyota Maintenance YouTube channel. Today in my shop, 2004 Toyota Camry. This one is having 228,000 miles on the clock and it's being driven, it's LE, and it's being driven locally here with a college student. These are the reasons why the vehicle came today. Number one, the check engine light is coming on and off. Uh, engine might be not running good. Number two, those high beams don't work. They are all completely gone. Number three, a right passenger headlight when she drives over the bumps might be completely going off it will be not working and number four shocking and scary when she will drive uphill the engine oil warning light in the dashboard will go on so this baby has a bunch of problems so of course, you are not grabbing the scanner immediately. First, we start with the paperwork, getting it from the glove box. That means you open or remove the glove box, check the cabin air filter behind it. Of course, that's dirty. And then you better start looking on the bigger picture. Open the hood, look how it's maintained, and we realize, both of all of us, we realize this is not going to be maintained. Where will be the coolant? No, probably gone. Let's go and check why possibly that oil pressure warning light in the instrument cluster is going on. And you expert see what kind of engine we have here. It's a two-way ZFE. Also, I will give you a hint with the sticker on the windshield. The oil is supposed to be changed again and 224,000 miles. We said we have 228 already. So, what do you think how much oil will be in this engine? Let's go and see together. Let's grab a clean rag, wipe off, dry the dipstick. Let me show you how much oil is there. It's completely dry, there's no oil on the dipstick at all, so no wonder we have the oil warning light on uphill. This engine is basically starving for the engine oil, starving for a lubrication. And as I said, instead of grabbing that scanner immediately, I just wanted to have a picture of what is happening here. And I looked, power steering fluid is good, the coolant seems to be gone. I was looking on the details of this drive belt, the serpentine belt. If somebody was doing something here, the things are disconnected. I will show you detail with the light. That serpentine belt has no cracks in this area, so it seems to be fine. But it's something is cutting it. Do you see those grooves right here? And then I look on the pulley of the water pump and there are like a crisscross steel scratches in it so I'm wondering what's happening around here but that will be for the later if I have a time to tinker with it for the customer who I know from the past this is just different car but looking going from the left to the right I didn't touch that yet. What is going on here? 
why this PCV hose which returns the fumes from the underneath the valve cover back to the intake how come this is disconnected and it just didn't fall off correct the clamp was moved from here to here and somebody was doing something and it was never put back what is happening I wonder what you will say what I see I think there are brand new ignition coils for some reason maybe the vehicle had the misfire look at it that's not original 228,000 miles even the connectors the wiring seems to be very new here there's absolutely no dust on it very new very new dirty here so maybe there was some red mice damage who knows but these coils definitely none toyota and we can see what is happening here the person who did the job forgot to connect this hose to the valve cover could this cause the engine not run correctly? Could this cause the check engine light? Well, absolutely. So we will put it back and continue with our diagnosis. I wish all the inspections and diagnosis were so easy like this one. Don't you think this is unbelievable? Just looking in the engine bay. Only after a couple of minutes moving around looking at it, I saw immediately what is happening with it. Okay, I didn't find a place for you and myself here. Scanner it's underneath the dashboard connected. That's linked to it. It should be fast. What do you think? What will be there as a code? No. Okay, uh huh. That's not surprising. P0171. System 2 lean on bank 1. So on the other one. P0303. Cylinder 3 misfire detected. Well, I guess these calls didn't fix the problem. P0420 catalyst system efficiency below threshold bank one that was a number three go P0303 cylinder three misfire detected so that's repeated code and five P0420 catalyst system efficiency below threshold bank one so that first code for two lean definitely could be caused by this hose disconnected number three misfire which is recorded twice apparently there is still problem hopefully it's not some serious like a low compression on that one cylinder the catalyst that we will see if it will come back or it could have been affected by the whole engine running too lean so so far we have really interesting results don't you think so now we can see some goofy stuff around here one two three four oh so the tab which is supposed to be holding it on the coil already broke off or these are really the aftermarket ones this one doesn't have a tab wow what is going on we have some interesting situation here going on so this is the number three correct let's go and look if that's fire plug what is in the shape how it looks like and you pay attention to everything how it's torqued when it will come out, how it looks like, how that cylinder is burning. So torque, I will say, was very good. 
That was just what I expected to crack it open and remove it out. That should be all. And okay, let's look on it together. And it's hard to tell or impossible to tell how old it is just looking at it. But it's Denso SK20 R11 Iridium spark plug by the tips. I will say this is fairly new. I will consider the gap 1.1 millimeter definitely not burnt off and I think this cylinder the color of the tip of the spark plug it's telling us it's burning correctly I definitely don't see any presence of oil or coolant or anything like that it's a slightly grayish color with maybe slightly getting brownish but I will say this is actually in really good shape and it will cost me very little time to swap the coils and even the spark plugs between three and four so look at this coil I don't see any oil I will say on that let me look inside this one looks completely dry let's remove the spark plug and because it just takes few minutes I will swap them between three and four and we will see in the future if the coat moved to the four therefore we can blame the coil or the plug or if it, the coat is staying in the future on the number three cylinder I will say this is identical color of the tip this looks identical so I'm taking the four in the three just switching them the burning in the cylinder seems to be perfect the color on the tip it's perfect so I will swap them for the reason I just explained I will use my torque wrench my hands that should be just perfect and we will move on the other problems which were mentioned in the beginning of the video we... all right that's nicely installed back We're looking on those high beams low beams that should be a low beam and that should be a high beam low beam we were reported that there might be intermittent function high beam bulb low beam let's check this connector and that connector actually was slightly off the clip which is there the clip clippy clip is there it wasn't pushed all the way in so that might have explained the intermittent function now what's about this high beam is the connector clipped all the way oh it's not let's see if it's broken no the connector is correctly here let's go to look on the bulb oh yeah this is absolutely clearly visible hopefully to you too the wire is interrupted and there is like a burned spot on the glass do you see it yeah right there complete fail so we have already answer to missing high beam on this side let's hope the battery will be will be not in our way on the driver side getting to that high beam so it should be this one this one the clip is uh, clipped correctly. Did you hear that? Did you hear that pop? Yep But let's see how the bulb is. So as you saw it correctly, right? I turn it towards to the me basically this way You remember that's how you pull it out. Oh Couldn't be even more obvious on this one again Look at that burn mark. Do you see it? 
Come on camera. So again, definitely that's replacement. There's no reason for any other diagnostics. Now just to move it on the lift between the towers, I started up and even on the flat right here, I saw that engine oil pressure warning light go on and off twice. What we see here and the windshield sticker which was in the cabin or is in the cabin, we can see it was done by one of those oil places. Not that I'm uh, blaming them for this situation because regarding the sticker she was supposed to change the oil uh, 4000 miles ago. And for the purpose of the good entertainment for you, I brought a catching pan here. So let's see how much oil is remaining in the engine which a dipstick cannot detach the oil level and the warning pressure light is actually going on even on the flat surface. Look at it. Not very thick, heavy stream of oil. And look at it. It will stop very soon. Well, that's too bad. I think I should call the owner, the mother of the student, and say, hey, you gotta pay for a bottle of champagne because I need to celebrate that I saved this Camry today, at least the engine. This is wonderful. We will do the full, full engine oil change. Yeah, there's almost nothing in the pan. I will put a synthetic 5W3 in it and hopefully it can stay alive. Now to mix the things up a little bit, there is unusual occurrence. All these oil places use their own crush washers. It's that kind of bronze gold color with that rubber part inside. This is reused Toyota blue crush washer for the oil drain plug. So I wonder if that oil change actually was even done because they never re reuse these blue ones. They use their own. So I wonder if they did oil change, if they even open it and let the oil out. And here you will be able to see how little <clears throat> of the oil came out, how burnt and thick it is. I will guesstimate this less than one quart. The oil is so thick that it barely wants to drain out. It's amazing. Somebody worked in it previously, but we disregarded and moving the spar plug and the coil between the cylinders was worth it. The coat and misfire. We don't have a check engine light yet, but it's pending there. It moved, the problem moved to the cylinder number four. So either spar plug or the coil are bad. After replacing all four spar plugs and just that one coil, here we can Enjoy that beautiful clicking and ticking. The valve cover is still down there, but everything is hooked, perfectly runs. Let's go to look on that little scanner here. Before, when the vehicle was put in the reverse, so we have no codes right now. When it was put in the reverse, it will start completely getting crazy and it will lose the idle and banging and doing all kinds of rucus and it that triggered that misfire on the four so let's go and rescan it but 
obviously we can hear and feel that everything's fine so sometimes the repairs can be pretty easy so i hope you enjoyed today's entertainment and make sure you are subscribed you don't miss any future videos thanks for watching and have a great day my friend